a sport with love. And I think so. It's grand. Whoever wants to box should box. Oh, a couple of years ago, we, when, he was in, was, when he was boxing in the seniors and that, you know, and he could see it, that he was going to go. You know, so he was definitely on, he was on cards anyway for the last four years. There's one of our good boxers there, look at him. Next, next Olympic winner. How are you, Shane? Yeah. Huh? Come in, come in. Welcome to the NTF, the National Training Facility. Uh, it's the National Stadium on the South Circular Road. This is where all the magic happens. This is my second home for the last maybe 10 years. When we started, we got all, all the new equipment in and things like that. We, uh, we were all asked to put a quote on the wall. With the likes of Barry McGuigan and all here, but that's my quote here. Accept your mistakes and learn from them. And the quote means an awful lot to me because Back in 2004, in the qualifiers for Athens, I made a couple of mistakes in the qualifiers and things like that, you know? Silly mistakes, but I've learned from them. Who have we got here? Turn around there. John, this is John Cleary, our strength and conditioning coach. Hello, Say hello, John. Hello. Before the left, we have, this is Tony Dava, one of the coaches from the high performance. Say hello, Tony, don't be shy. <laughs> When you're in the ring, all you see is your opponent. But the certain things you hear, a certain voice that you twig, like my coach's voice, I could hear Zara or Billy, they'd be screaming and shouting instructions, I could pick them up. Like move or left hand to the body or whatever, you twig straight away, you know? This is, this is Billy Walsh, the head coach. He's from Wexford. Yeah, <laughs> Good Wexford man. Come up here to educate the dub. I need a few numbers off you. Crew. Yeah, we're a family, you know, really your family. I think it probably became really evident at the Olympic Games because <coughs> we just the ball, we had a ball out there. Just you know, it was just a real Kenny likes things to be lighthearted and funny, so we try to keep that way. And you know, there's enough tension when you go to the ring, you know, so we just try to keep everything outside of that normal as possible or maybe sort of abnormal as possible in having that laugh in the job. We just we don't take ourselves too serious, you know even though we take our training and our preparation serious, but outside that we just enjoy life, you know, and uh, <clears throat> there's enough seriousness when you get inside the rope, so outside that we try and keep it happy and keep everybody relaxed, because everybody performs to the best when they're relaxed, so that's, that's our, sort of our motto or you know, what we strive to do, you know. Yeah, I saw him as a junior, as a, as a young man uh, fighting in the national championships. Obviously, he had this judgment that, you know, it was natural more than anything else, and uh, he had his natural judgment of distance, and his timing was, was very, very good, uh, which is something that's it's very difficult to give to somebody. We have actually a beautiful picture in the stadium where a guy's throwing a punch, and Kenny's just leaning back, and the glove is just there. And he misses it and comes back in and, hit, and hits him, you know? That's a natural ability, and you can't train that. You can try and train it, and you can give it, but he has to be able to be in that zone and to be able to judge that. And have that bravery, it's a brave position to be in, to be able to stay there when someone is going to punch at you and just go, up, and make a miss, and then come back in and counter. The boxer has had a little bit of arrogance and you know not too much now. We, we like to try and keep it. We're all trying to teach him to be a nice person as well as be a, a good boxer. Uh, we try to develop the character along with the athlete. The important thing is obviously the heels are off the ground, but Kenny, as a southpaw, he needed to move this foot with it and turn his body with it. So that brings him out, his feet are back together, look, out to the side of his opponent without being hit. And also, you know, a lot of fellas will have this problem of bringing their feet together. We need to keep our boxing stance. So if we're moving, they need to be there. If we're going forwards, going backwards, the south power auto locks, we're keeping that same space, which is creating your balance. The last time we've been in the ring is in the final of the Olympics. But that's it's no harm in that. You know, like a dual break. What I do dislike is, is guys not getting the best out of themselves. Because I wasted some myself in uh, my own career, so I left the game, finishing my career then with um, not being 
happy with what I did achieve and I could have done a few little things more. That's what drives me, I don't want to see the boys leave the same way, you know, because I know they have the talent. <laughs> He's a great captain, you know, he's, he's a lovely gentleman and, you know, I see him here, he's, these youth team are in getting ready for uh, uh, the World Championships in Mexico and he's in giving, the, giving them advice, you know, pitfalls that he has fallen through uh, and he's, he's trying to make sure that the boys avoid those. And, It's going to be difficult. He'll find difficulty in, in holding his Irish title in four years' time. Because there's a couple of good crop of young lads coming behind him here, you know. They all want Kenny Egan's scalp, you know, so it'll be difficult, you know, it's not easy. You know, if it was easy, sure, we'd all be doing it, you know, so. This is all from Georgia. Lovely country, beautiful country. The best bread, the best wine. Olympic boy, Olympic boy yeah. yeah. Go to me top look. Um, maybe I'm... I wouldn't have qualified without, without, without Zor. Because of, of, of the way he, he teaches, because he, he's a real Eastern Bloc style of boxing. And that's, that's the way forward, you know? The fainting and the the movement in the ring and scoring the points, the fence. It's all very simple to him, because he's been doing it the last 40 years. He's the brains behind how we box. To be honest, with the whole Olympics, he's the hero, you know? I, I, saw, I saw a dream. He had a dream, yeah. Six months ago, maybe. Maybe, more even, more. Maybe, yeah. I told him, you will be in final, and you will meet Russian boxer, you will be champion. I see this dream really. When he beat that China boxer, okay? Then I was thinking, that day I was in dream something wrong. He, that Russia, no, they are. That means he can lose, you know? <laughs> you understand? Because yeah. it was very difficult. <laughs> that maybe, you know, when you win, that means sometimes it comes back, you know, everything. Yeah. And when that Russian, Lost got him. beaten, yeah. And I was doubt myself. His dream was was, but I did not was gone out the window, you know. I call him Tony Montana. <laughs> Tony Montana. <laughs> no, I talk to you during the week. See you, brother. Yeah. Listen, I had your two envelopes. The which? Two envelopes. Envelopes, yeah. Envelopes. Are they still up there, already? Is there any money in them? If it's their money, half is mine. Because <laughs> I have two months, I can do it. I'll see you later, all right? Good luck, good luck. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a gas man. There's only two actual boxers that he was, he was mad about, myself and Andy Lee. But Andy Lee, after Athens, decided to go pro, you know? So he was a bit upset about that, but he wants me to, to stay amateur. Um, and work again for another four years, because he, he's a brilliant coach. The two of us get on like a house on fire. I've more or less been part of the furniture. That gym, I've been there since 2001. When, when I joined the senior team, when it was the old style and the, the old gym with one ring, and now with the high performance. I've been there from the start of the high performance. As Billy said, I'm always forced in after getting beat. I want to learn, I want to, I want to put things right. Well, that's the whole thing about boxing. You have to have discipline. If you get in there and you get a smack and you didn't like it, you're in the, in the ring, you're throwing a tantrum. Straight away, you've lost. You have to keep it cool. Even if you're behind by a few points and the fight's not going your way, you just have to keep plugging away and try and make things better, you know? But you can't go in there and start getting angry and, and, and throwing all sorts of shots because you're only going to get chinned or, you, you know, you get knocked out easy. But that's what boxing does. It teaches you discipline and youth level. You see kids getting in there 11 or 12 years of age and they're taking a couple of hard shots, but they don't start crying or, or or panic around, they just keep going on with the game because that's, that's what boxing does, you know. Every evening we, do, we were in the ring, boxing sessions, tomorrow times, Monday, Wednesday we run, Tuesday, Thursday, weights or circuits, mm. Friday's a rest day, Saturday, go for a nice easy run, Sunday rest, and then back in on the Monday. So we're more or less training five days a week, twice a day. 
we're always on the road, we're in training camps, we're in Russia, great connection with Russia through Zor, our coach. We're in Germany, we have a good relationship with them, the French as well, so we're always away training with these boys. These are the lads that win medals. Mm. So you have to be in that mixture. You know, hopefully now in the next four years we get more younger lads coming up. There's a few good lads there, juniors, coming up now that are 17, 18, they'll be the right age to have the games. But uh, it keeps going the way it's going. There's plenty of more medals out there to be won. It's not the Hilton now or the, or the, the Plaza Hotel, but it's just somewhere to throw the head down. Boys, you're not trying to. No, oh. oh, have you? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> look at the state of this place, look. The reason why the mother's not here with them. Animals. But uh, it's, it's not nothing fancy, is it? But it's just it's somewhere to throw the head down before we fly out or whatever. Because we're normally flying out at 6 in the morning. So. That was the three of us qualifying in Athens. We qualify for the games. That's up at the Acropolis. Three gold medals, myself, Johnny and Darren. Then myself and Darren obviously went on to win the, the medals in the games. And Johnny was beaten on a countback by the eventual winner. This is where the coaches keep Billy and when they're up training, because Billy lives in Wexford. And John lives in Tipperary, so they just throw their head down there during the week, go home the weekends and that. They'll be all moaning at me because they're four lockers and the boys have, 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 have only one each. I've seen this room many a time. I've come in here with busted noses, busted lips. All sorts, for sure. That's all part of the game. This is the main officer. Okay, right. Anyone that's camera show you turn oh, away now. Did you tell Ken the one? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm here for. Well, I'll have to get one. This what is, is for a, did you tell it? It's for a priest who was oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Right. He won the juniors. Very good. And he's 75 years of age now. You want me to sign it? Oh, it's vest, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for a blue vest. Large. Well, I've shown Donna to feel that one. Is he there? Egan, more than any of the other boxers, was, was according to seasoned observers, the victim of a very bad decision in his contest with the Chinese boxer, when he was deprived of a gold medal by the so-called judges. Finally, the judges in the... Sorry, I have to move it up. Finally, the judges in the contest were either incompetent or else they would need to go to spec sabers to get a night test. Yeah. Yeah, this is for, this is for a priest in the foreign mission. What's the name? Good job. Father Sean McKenna. Father Sean McKenna. Father Sean, maybe. Sean McKenna. Father Sean, do Father Sean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. That's how it looks. That's all I can do is my autograph. I can't do that, Nils. That's all right, so we need you, Father. What's this one? Same again. Same again, yeah. only last year he's learned to ride train, join on. Join on. Join on right now. You don't get asked that often for an autograph. You try to let everybody know who you are, so you, you write your name properly, and then when everybody knows you, you just scribble on it. <laughs> a lot of people are talking about the, the medal kissing thing, and to me, it was just natural. Oh, I didn't plan that. It was just, I was so close to having that medal around my own neck. I just had to feel it, and I just gave it a, a little peck. And when I come back, everyone was talking about it back in Ireland. Oh, you kissed the medal. I was crying and all. Oh well, yeah, yeah. You know, women and <laughs> they're all crying about it. I really thought that was funny, like, you know, but like, it wasn't his fault. The scoring was, was, you know, a bit dodgy. Right, today, anyway, the 12 o'clock photo shoot, yeah? Well, a photo shoot at 12 o'clock. Yeah. Out in Sandy Mount. Just wear shorts. I might have to wear a vest, and they're going to oil me up. Something's <laughs> <laughs> That's your night. I love that tattoo. Absolutely brilliant. It's nice, because it means something. It means something, you know what I mean? It's not just a stupid tattoo on your arm for the, for the sake of it. You'll be there for life. I'm an Olympian and that's, that's it. Like. Twist around a bit. Some of it. Yeah. Like, it's great to be famous, as they say. I don't, I don't class myself as famous. But I feel there is that little bit of an aura around me. And kids know when they see me and they're all they're touching each other and elbow. Oh, here's Kenny Egan and that, you know? I think that's... The, it's, that's Mad. Just see the teeth, baby. I don't know, but. <laughs> 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 What's the start of the gloves there? Are we allowed to gloves there, are we? <laughs> Come on, just a minute, one minute. 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> 12 o'clock. The key barracks. Some fundraiser, 10k fundraiser. I'll be cutting the ribbon. Ribbon cutting.
Four o'clock. Walkerstown. Walkerstown. Uh, Toyota. Give me a car. I'm on the cafe. What a program, cafe. Now we promised you music before we leave you. It doesn't, it doesn't pay to be a hard man. You know what I mean? You get more respect if you're nice. You don't need to be going out throwing your weight around the place, you know? I'm a boxer, watch out. That's no good. Saturday. Paris. Till Sunday. Presentation. The president. Sarkozy and his wife. I know the Paris the weekend, actually. You know, with me, Jack Chirac. Shit, Sarkozy. Oh, so, oh yeah. Sarkozy. Oh, shit. Mr. Chirac, here we go. And then, after we be down in Dundalk, at a boxing show, I'm putting us up in a hotel if they present the future, medals and that. Oh, we love Kenny Egan. Oh, <laughs> it's Sunday then. I'll have to look at my calendar now and give you the rest of it. I'll have it all logged down the calendar. That's the Saturday or Sunday anyway. I've had a few offers, yeah, definitely. Yeah, in Ireland and, and in the States, you know. Um, I was, yeah, I was over in Los Angeles there now. I went over to watch the, the uh, uh, the Shane Mosley fight in Mayorga. Yeah, that was on Saturday night. I, I, was, at, I was at ringside, sitting beside Don King. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't, haven't made any decisions yet, so as from now, I'm, I'm still amateur. Probably will be the last four years of my boxing career, or five years, so it's very important that I make the right decision. And the one that's right for me, you know. Like, I'm open to all offers. When the offers I get, I'll bring back to the Sports Council, and then they can sit down and have a look at it, you know. Dear Kenny, congratulations for getting the silver medal in China. I really enjoyed uh, watching you. You deserve to have the gold. Good luck in your next fight from Luke, age day. P.S. My brother Greg is also a big fan. He is five and says hello. P.P.S. My brother Carl, he is three. I think he's going to be a boxer because he's always boxing me and Greg. And he sent me a stamp address there. Now, how could you not send back a, a letter to him? Look at the stamp address there, no. Now, in all honesty, where would we go? I was crying reading them. I was in, but my eyes were bits reading some of them. There's all my Dublin's, Dublin titles, Leinster titles, all my eight senior titles. Then was that. That was the start of it. When was the 2001 the senior? I was 19. I wasn't expected to win the competition. It was just to come out with the blue after winning the intermediate. I trained so hard. All, all I'm thinking about is, when I finish training, get something to eat, and you're straight in the bed to rest. Because the sessions we do, Tony and John or any of the brothers wouldn't be able for them. All they think is you're going down to the gym to do a little bit of a workout. But when your, your heart rate is at its max for the guts of 40, 50 minutes of, a, of an hour and a half session. But the first thing you're thinking of is, is getting the food back into you, feeding the engine and then into bed to rest. Because you're back in training then a couple of hours later. It all works together. You can't just train and then walk around like a normal Joe Soap. You have to straight back into bed resting. Recharging your batteries and getting ready then for for uh, round two, you know. Because of the circumstances, it was great to have the silver, but I could have had that little one, one step higher and, and seen the flag being raised and a national anthem and there would have been tears and snots everywhere, you know. But uh, the silver medal is great, it's a great achievement. We haven't had a medal since 92. For the, the moment, as I'm speaking to you now, I feel I'm the best 81 kilo light heavyweight boxer on the planet. And it's in an article downstairs, and I stand by that. And until I go to a competition and someone better than me beats me, that's, that's how I feel at the minute. I feel like I'm an Olympic champion. I look at this a few times. When I'm going to bed, I do look over at it, you know. Martin Rogan, super heavyweight, has gone professional. Andy Murray's gone pro. Paul McCluskey's gone pro. Eric is still around. Martin Lindsay's gone pro. Paddy Hoy Patrick Paul Hoyland's gone pro. And Connor's still around. The amount of people who have gone pro and there's probably one of them out of that that's doing half decent, probably Andy Lee and Paul McCluskey. The rest are, are, are boxing for uh, uh, pittance, I'd say, you know. It's a hard old game, you know. And I'd say they're probably kicking themselves that they didn't hang around for the Olympic status. 
because it's, it's every boxer's dream to reach the Olympics. Um, and they just couldn't wait, they didn't want to wait. Maybe because they weren't being looked after properly or whatever, but it's, it's hard to get funded by the sports council if you're not winning stuff. This is unbelievable. Jeez, it's like really in the pub having a few drinks and he <laughs> came in with his El Rubina, have a down talk for 10 minutes. Where are you going now? Stadium. And he's gone again. You wouldn't see him for a week or two when he's back down. How's he going? I'm going here, I'm going there. So you got a photo taken here with a kid with the medal. Get, get this on there. How are you keeping, bud? I'm a United supporter. Good stuff. That's what I like to say. Grab a hell of that. Stick it around your neck there and we get a photo. Your boots and all with you. You going to do a few rounds with me? <laughs> <laughs> there you are now. Wait, come around here and get the photo. Hold that up, hold it up. Yeah, yeah. I will never.